Well, let's do Son of Saul, which is an absolutely extraordinary and very, very harrowing and very powerful uh, film directed by Laszlo Nemes, which uh, recently won the, well, not that recently, won the uh, Oscar for Best Foreign uh, Language Film, played in Cannes last year. And it is a, a quite extraordinary drama. It is set in Auschwitz in 1944. Saul, who is the central character, is a member of the Sonderkommando, uh, therefore working, being forced to work uh, on the Nazis' extermination production line. And during the course of the unbelievably harrowing drama, uh, what happens is that through a series of uh, circumstances, he comes to believe that uh, one of the victims of the gas chambers is in fact his son and he, what he wants to do is to arrange a proper burial. This is meanwhile going on alongside another plot in which there are whispers of an uprising of a revolt. Now, the thing about the film is this, there have been many very, very uh, intelligent and you know uh, heated discussions about how one may or may not portray the Holocaust on screen in, in fiction films. And I, you know, this is, it's a very difficult area. What I can say is this, the extraordinary thing about Son of Saul is that it is a film which looks at the most horrendous possible circumstance. And I think does so in a way which is, which is moral, which is serious, which has attempted quite genuinely to develop an aesthetic, which gives you a sense of the awful hellish world that this is taking place in without exploiting it. One of the ways it does that is that we have a, a kind of a very sort of a, a close frame, shallow focus, that for most of the time, the camera looks directly at the face of Saul, who is um, brilliantly played by Kaiser Rohrig, uh, who I feature first time, he's a poet. And we, what we see is in his face and in the immediate immediate space around him, kind of reflections, refractions of this of the appalling atrocities which are going on around him. And I think that this is an aesthetic decision made very carefully and very specifically in order to enable the film to talk visually about something that what it doesn't want to do is to is is to exploit in any way at all. Um, so although there, you know, there's no question that there are there, there are sites in the movie that are you know that are really very very tough, but for most of the time, what the movie is doing is looking at this central character, and it's the sounds, it's the extraordinarily well orchestrated cacophony of sounds that are really sort of brilliant. somehow narrowing the scope of the image broadens its its impact. Um, I. I was genuinely overwhelmed by it. I genuinely found myself shaken to the core by watching it, but also impressed by the level of seriousness, the level of uh, technical acumen, the way in which it really looked like the work of a filmmaker who had said to himself, I am going to, I am going to address the aesthetic problem, the moral problem, the philosophical problem, and I'm going to do them in a way which is, in a way which is rigorous. And the end result of it is, as I said, I mean, completely overwhelming, a really, a really powerful film, very, very difficult to watch as it should be. I mean, almost unwatchable in certain places, but made, I genuinely think, with the kind of integrity that the subject matter deserves and I think the plaudits that the film has received, which are widespread, are entirely earned. And I really can't think of another film like it, certainly that, that, that I can bring to mind in terms of its impact. It's called Son of Saul, uh, and you may have to seek it out, but I think it's a film which will have a fairly you know, high profile, obviously because much has been written about it and because of the fact that it, you know, it, it, it has won some significant awards.